Let's talk to Clem Chambers, the founder of ADVFN. Very good morning to you, young Clem. Good morning, Nick. Um, stock markets last week sort of held in, if that's the right word. Um, anything sort of catch your eye, so to speak? Well, I've had sort of two uh, theories running side by side. One is we're in for a crash. Two, that we're in for a correction that the Fed will come in and support. Now, that one is running my favourite at the moment because if you look at all the different markets, the Dow, which is the one that uh, the Fed supported back in 2000 after the dot-com crash, has held up and rallied really hard. But everything else has lagged that rally because they put liquidity in. It goes into the Dow, which are good carry trades because a lot of them have dividends, etc. And the Nasdaq, for example, hasn't really bounced much. The uh, UK FTSE hasn't really bounced much. The DAX hasn't really bounced much, not in comparison with the Dow. And when you look back at the crash of 2000 to 2004, you can see that the Dow held up. They had a series of 10% corrections and one crash, whereas the Nasdaq just you know, rolls over and, and collapses. And, you know, I think probably that's what we're seeing now. So if you're in the defensives, if you're in the sort of thing that will um, bounce with a liquidity injection, then you'll probably got some downside protection. But if you're in a darling, um, you know, a, a Amazon or a, or a Google or a Facebook, you're going to take a pounding. So I think that's where we are. I think the Fed will try to keep the market going sideways until it's got through um, base, basically paying down its balance sheet, which has probably got another two years to run, maybe three. Um, and so we're in for a pretty much a bear market for a couple of years. And I think really it's only going to turn around when we're about 12 months away from the Fed getting its balance sheet back to where it wants it to be. The question is, where is that? Is that, um, you know, three trillion, two trillion, one trillion, 600 million or 600 billion rather where I think it started off at? Where is that point? I suspect it's a lot higher up than where it started from before the credit crunch. So it may be this will be over a little bit earlier than expected. But I'm still expecting it to go a year or more, and I'm, it's going to be very fragile and prone to a crash, just as in 2002, it really just couldn't hold itself up any longer, and it crashed, for, for there was a crash there, uh, and until it actually, after a few months, came back to that sort of sideways uh, trend line back in 2000 to 2004. Um, so I think if you want to see the future of really solid stocks that, that pay, that have, you know, not ridiculous PEs, that have pay dividends and you can go back and look at 2000 if you want to see what's going to happen to glory stocks you know the sort of things with um 97 pe's and 10 yep. times sales then you can go and look at what happened to the nasdaq over that period so you've really got to you know watch out i think understood well i spoke to a number of commentators last week and they're all talking about the christmas rally do you think we'll end up with a christmas rally this year well the santa rally is really caused by funds trying to do um, a little bit of a window dressing for their year end. So they pump their liquidity in, um, their spare liquidity in at the end of the year to, to fluff up and um, you know put um, lipstick on the pig when it comes to their portfolios. So whether they're going to be in the market for that this year or not is another matter. I would probably suspect that there might be a little bit because there generally is a little bit. But, you know, after a decade of bull market, it's very easy to get complacent and go, well, you know, it's happened a lot in the past. Yeah. But I, I do think that whatever the market um, was, it ended in February. We are in a new market and we've really got to divine what that market is, which will probably be lasting for several years. And before we can go around making um, predictions, because I, I don't think we're in a market where the past is a good guide. I think we're in a market where the past is not a guide for the future. And like the good old investment warning is, you know, the past is no guide to the future. And I think that's very, very much the case in the coming years. So I think you've got to develop a new theory. And I think the Santa rally, well, that's open. Um, and I think it's going to be a lot less likely than in the past. OK, let's wrap up with Bitcoin. We've had a 10 year anniversary, lots of commentary about the pros and the cons of Bitcoin. In terms of the actual price action in the last week, anything? Well, there's this massive compression going on of their volatility and I don't understand it. Something's going on. And the question is, which way is it going to break? I mean, I'd love it to break north. And in fact, I'd love it to break south because I'd love to buy a lot more. Um, you know, it's gone into a tremendous uh, range compression. And that is very, very strange. 
And I, well, I don't know. I really don't know. But whichever way it breaks, say two or three hundred dollars a coin, it's going to go quite a long way after that. So I'm just waiting for the breakout and I'll jump on whatever breakout goes, you know, three or four or five percent, because this compression is really almost supernatural. I've never seen the likes of it in any market. So, you know, once again, we're in, in you know, the twilight zone. Um, I would like it to break south because I'd like to buy lots at two thousand, three thousand dollar level. Um, but it could really it. Wherever it goes after this compression, it's going to go quite a long way. So if it broke up outwards, it could go to 10,000. If it broke down, it could halve. So I'm just sat there waiting to, for it to tell me which way I should jump. But you won't basically go ahead of the curve and try and predict that? Well, yeah, no. I mean, I tell you, I'm buying, but I'm not buying all guns blazing. And if it was to fall heavily, I would buy a lot. Um, if it breaks up, well, I'll carry on buying, you know, reasonably because it's got a long way to go. But I think you should accumulate at these levels. And certainly if you can find any really, really high quality altcoins, it's a very good time to um, accumulate things like Raven and um, Doggy Coin and stuff like that. Um, because, you know, those are the ones that are going to jump even more when it goes um, north. Um, then um, even Bitcoin is going to go. So the altcoins, well, if Bitcoin goes up 50%, they'll go up 200%. So, you know, it, it's a game of speculation, of high risk. And at the moment, that high risk has gone out of the market, which it makes it a cold spring one way or the other. I want it to go because I want down because I want to buy a lot. But, I, I you know, it, it's most it's not going to go the way that I want it to go. So there's a there's a reasonably good possibility that it's going to break north but it will tell us all because when it goes three or four hundred dollars one way or the other if you broke under six thousand for example you could be pretty sure it's going to go a thousand or two dollars lower if it goes through seven thousand it's going to go to ten so you know it's a cold spring one way or the other when it starts to move it's going to go a fairly long way so you know you don't have to predict um, the direction you just have to be ready to jump on the move after it's established itself Right, we've run out of time. Clem, thank you. Thought-provoking as always. We'll talk to you same time next week. That's Clem Chambers, the founder of ADVFN. Cheers, Nick. Thank you very much. Thank you.